All right, let's talk about something that's been bugging me for a while. Everybody loves to talk about green jobs, right? The big shiny promise of getting a paycheck while saving the planet. Sounds great in theory, but I'm about to give you a dose of reality. Green jobs aren't always as green as they seem. Let's talk about it. Because clearly, if you're working in the environmental sector, you've got to be saving the planet. Everything's just rainbows and solar panels, right? It's just hugging trees and saving endangered species, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, not quite. Let's start with the myth of the green job. These days, governments and companies are pushing the idea that if you work in solar, wind, or anything labeled environmental, you're automatically a hero, saving the world from the evil clutches of climate change. But here's the truth that no one wants to tell anybody. Most of these so-called green jobs aren't so eco-friendly as you'd think. Sure, you might be working in renewable energy or recycling, but there's a darker side to all this that they conveniently leave out. They want to paint a rosy picture of green energy without telling you what happens behind the scenes. The mining, the waste, the energy costs of production. It's not the fairy tale that you've all been sold. I've been in the environmental sector for years. I've worked in labs, managed scrapyards, climbed water towers, you name it. And let me tell you, some of those jobs were anything but green. Take recycling, for instance. You think you're doing the planet a favor, right? But a lot of what happens in these scrapyards and recycling centers is just a business like anything else. You'd be surprised how much of what gets recycled doesn't even make it back into the system. Some of it gets trashed because it's not cost effective to process, and the energy used in sorting and processing can be, and often is, massive. And don't even get me started on the safety risks. Climbing water towers might sound like a noble job, but those environmental jobs aren't without danger. They don't exactly tell you that part when they're selling you on the green dream. Let's talk about renewable energy for a moment. Solar panels, wind turbines, these things are supposed to be the saviors of the planet, right? Well, sure, they cut down on fossil fuels, but have you ever stopped to think about what it takes to make them, how much energy and resources goes into building those solar panels or the steel needed for the wind turbines? But I guess it's fine because it's for the greater good, right? We just ignore the mining of rare earth metals, the carbon footprint of manufacturing, and the waste produced when these things hit the end of their life cycle. It's not all green. It's a dirty little secret that no one wants to talk about. Just because something's renewable doesn't mean it's entirely clean. It's still part of an industrial system that consumes resources and generates waste. We need to stop pretending that all renewable energy is completely green. Now let's talk about some of the government policies. Every politician nowadays is trying to jump on the green bandwagon, pushing for more green jobs, more renewable energy, and more regulations on traditional industries. And don't get me wrong, I am all for reducing pollution and creating sustainable industries, but you got to be smart about it. What they don't tell you is that these policies sometimes and often hurt more than they help. Forcing industries to adopt green standards without proper planning can lead to inefficiency, job losses, and even more waste. I've seen it firsthand in my time working in the oil field and other sectors. People lose their jobs because the industry isn't prepared to make the switch, and suddenly we've got entire sectors in chaos. And what happens when those green policies aren't implemented properly? You get half-assed solutions that don't solve the problem, and you end up doing more harm than good. We need real solutions, not band-aids that look good on paper. Uh, speaking of half-assed solutions, let's talk about this whole thing called greenwashing. Every major company out there is slapping an eco-friendly label on their products to make themselves look good. But how much of that is real? Not much, I'll tell you that. Buy our green products. We care about the planet. Meanwhile, they're shipping it across the world using cheap labor and dumping the waste like any other corporation. It's all a marketing gimmick, plain and simple. Trust me. I've worked in these industries where I've seen how these corporations operate. They'll do the bare minimum to look green because it's trendy and profitable, but behind closed doors, they're cutting corners and polluting just like everyone else. Don't be fooled by the pretty packaging. Greenwashing is just another way to get your money while keeping things business as usual. Now let's dive into the dirty side of environmental jobs. Literally. 
When you work in these industries, especially things like waste management, recycling, or industrial environmental cleanup, you get your hands dirty. You're dealing with hazardous materials, and trust me, it's not as glamorous as saving the planet sounds. I've been in situations where you're out there, knee-deep in muck, cleaning up toxic spills or climbing dangerous heights with equipment that's far from reliable. These jobs are risky. They don't tell you about the long hours, the physical danger, or the lack of safety in many of these green jobs. And the worst part? A lot of companies don't care about your safety. They're more concerned with cutting costs than making sure their workers are protected. I have seen scummy business practices where corners were cut just to hit quotas or keep the image of being green while putting employees at serious risk. You know what? There's this idea, if you're working in the environmental sector, you're some kind of clean eco-warrior. But let me tell you from first-hand experience, these jobs are anything but clean. Whether it's dealing with industrial waste, hazardous materials, or just the day-to-day -day grime of working in a scrapyard or a cleanup site, you're getting filthy. Green jobs aren't glamorous. You're not out there planting trees all day. You're handling dangerous chemicals, wearing dirty gear, and getting into situations that are far from what people imagine when they think of an environmental worker. And don't think for a second that these companies are always following the rules. I've seen businesses cut safety regulations and ignore environmental protocols just to save a buck. They might sell themselves as eco-friendly, but behind the scenes, it's a different story. In all my years working in industrial and environmental jobs, I've seen firsthand how these companies operate. They'll cut corners on safety, ignore the environmental impact of their actions, and try to sell themselves as green heroes to the public. But behind the scenes, they're just looking for profits, regardless of the toll it takes on their workers or the environment. It's a real eye-opener when you're out there, dealing with dangerous materials, working in unsafe conditions, and seeing these companies parade themselves as environmentally responsible. When you know firsthand it's all a front. Green jobs can be just as dirty, risky, and exploitative as any other industry. Look, I'm not just some guy sitting here spouting off about this stuff. I've been in the trenches, literally. I've got 12 years of experience in industrial and environmental work, and I have seen it all. I've been in labs, managed scrap yards, worked in the oil field, climbed water towers, you name it, I've done it. And in all that time, I've seen firsthand how these industries operate behind closed doors. The stuff they don't tell you when they're selling the green dream, I've lived it. So when I say green jobs aren't what they're cracked up to be, it's not speculation. It's not a guess. It's reality. I've seen it with my own eyes. People love to romanticize the idea of environmental work, but in my 12 years, I've seen the truth, and trust me, it's not pretty. From scummy business practices to dangerous working conditions, I've been in the thick of it. I've seen companies put profit over safety, cut corners on environmental regulations, and treat their workers like disposable parts of a machine. And the thing is, this isn't just some rare occurrence. It happens more often than you would think. When you're out there in the middle of nowhere working on dangerous rigs or handling toxic waste, you realize how little these companies actually care about you or the environment. It's all about the bottom line, and if you're lucky, you'll make it out unscathed. I've worked for both large and small companies, and I've seen the same pattern across the board. They might slap an eco-friendly label on their operations, but I've been on the ground floor where the rubber meets the road, and let me tell you, it's not what they want you to think. When I was climbing water towers, managing scrapyards, and working in labs, I wasn't sitting behind a desk. I was out there, getting my hands dirty, dealing with the dangers, and seeing the truth behind the corporate greenwashing. And after my 12 years, I've learned one thing. It's all a game. I've seen enough to know when I'm being lied to. And I'm here to tell you that if you think these green jobs are all clean and safe, you're being lied to too. My experience speaks volumes, and it's time we start having real conversations about what's going on in these industries.
So when I tell you about the reality of green jobs and environmental work, it's not just some theory. I've been there. I've seen the scummy practices, the dirty secrets, and the dangers firsthand. And after 12 years in the game, I'm here to tell you, don't buy into the hype without looking beneath the surface. If you're into real, unfiltered conversations about the realities of work, the environmental field, corporate structures, politics, subscribe. Because I'm just getting started with all this stuff. Drop a comment below if you've ever been in this kind of industry and if you know what I'm talking about. And let me know what your experience was. We got to keep the conversation going.